Terry writes about dystopian futuristic societies in the United States, uh, <laughs> given the election. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say that those books, dystopian, futuristic societies, have been now moved to realistic fiction. Uh -huh. And I'm here to tell you that this is not our president, <laughs> not with the SCBW, my president. But in any case, we have for you, I'm going to give for you a glove. Oh, <laughs> This is the real crystal kite, so real in fact that people are stopped at airports and search because there's a lot of lead in this crystal. Lovely. So you're supposed to wear your gloves yes. when, you, when you pick it up to admire it, which I hope you will do often. <laughs> it's to Terry Terry, in recognition of her winning of the crystal kite given by your region of the SCBWI for mind games. And I give it to you with great love and admiration from all of us in SCBWI. Thank you very much. <laughs> to be awarded something like this from you know my peers and my friends and you know sort of a group where I felt very much at home for a while. Um, I believe actually the last time that Lynn was here I had my very first book launch for Slated so I, think uh -huh. I remember that so that's how long ago it was. Um, now I've approached this moment like I approach all important moments in my life. I hunted for the perfect notebook. <laughs> because that is very important in all matters. So the one that I found, for those of you who can't see, says the story of my life. And underneath it says main themes, sitting on sofa, watching TV, and eating pizzas. <laughs> I've written underneath writing books as an add-on, and you could probably swap um, pizzas in, you know, for popcorn, and that would be fairly accurate. So just um, see what else it was I was supposed to say now. Right. Oh, I did the thank you bit, that's all good, yes. Um, I think one thing that I wanted to mention, um, you know, because in SBWI we're so supportive of, of, of each other and um, when I started out it seemed like a lot of us were unpublished and that over the years it keeps changing and there's some more, many more of us have made that, that step, um, but really I am the poster child for perseverance. <laughs> when Slater got published it was the ninth complete novel that I'd written, you know, and there were many more that I'd started and I've been submitting things for quite a long time. Um, and it was just that whole don't give up, you know, and I was going to my Scooby conferences every year since 2008, I haven't missed one, and going to all those, you know, um, informative and um, very useful talks about like how to do synopses and how to do submissions and how to be professional and all that kind of stuff. Um, but then I got the call to go um, see a very nice agent named Carolyn Sheldon, who I think might be here soon. Yeah, she's waving, there she is. <laughs> and um, I was... <laughs> very, very nervous. I walked into her office, and apologies for a few that might have heard this story before, but I walked into her office and I knocked over the gruffle and display with my handbag. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I was, um, you know, sat at her, behind a desk um, and she said she'd like to represent me, I was so freaked out that I couldn't remember my own home address. <laughs> <laughs> but she overlooked these things and, you know, we've uh, carried on and um, She's found me wonderful homes, homes for my books with Orchard Books, and everything's been going spectacularly well. So um, I have a lot, of, lot to thank Caroline for, for overlooking those uh, early indiscretions, shall we say. Um, I suppose how I ended up here, really, is that I, the things that I love most in the world is I love books, I love reading, I love writing. You know, that's just the total full sum of everything, you know, that I think sort of got me into writing. Um, I've always looked at reading and writing, really, as an escape from reality, but... Um, or is it? No. The Slater trilogy, which I, from now, you know, for, from the last year or so, have started in, in my mind, always referring to as the Brexit trilogy. Because <laughs> the whole backstory of it is that the UK left the EU, it closed borders, and there was riots, and all the collapse, and da da da. Hopefully, not all of that will happen. Um, and then there's mind games. You know, mind games is all about virtual worlds. Um, and you know how we all seem to live more and more on our devices and in our virtual places, and you know what extremes that could go to. Um, so that doesn't sound that unrealistic to a lot of us, I'm sure. Um, but there's a really big part of mind games is this whole idea about intelligence and rationality. 
um, and this idea that um, you know someone's going to have an important position of power, um, maybe I don't know a world leader or something like that, <laughs> that they should be both intelligent and rational. And you know it's actually kind of hard to argue that that should be a minimum entrance requirement. Um, <laughs> but I do actually think there's something else that's missing um, from that, which is. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, just really quickly, um, a few years ago there was a big upsurgence in interest in books, um, UK YA, written in the UK, you know, with UK settings, and characters that, you know, people could read here, and, and, and young people could read books and recognise themselves in stories and know that they're not alone, and I think that's really important, but sort of apart from that, it's also, I think, really, really important to read stories about people that are different to you, mm -hmm. and to be able to relate to them and, you know, say, they're different to me, but I still care, you know, and I understand. And that's really all about uh, empathy that a few other people have mentioned earlier today, which is just so important. Um, and you now it's sort of developing empathy as a way out of ignorance and darkness. And um, if, um, say, world leaders not only have to be intelligent and rational and have empathy, just imagine what a nice world it would be. Wow. But I suppose everyone here today, in one way or another, you know, writers, illustrators, people who work in publishing, um, what we're all about is wanting to put books into the hands of young people and hope that, you know, maybe if we achieve this, that, you know, one day they might um, do a better job with the world than we have. Um, so that's the main thing I wanted to say, but um, there's one final little bit of advice that I have, is um, really something I have learned the hard way. Um, you shouldn't acquire more books or no books than you can reasonably fit in your house. <laughs> <laughs>